I've been in the position that I'm in right now for, well, since 2003. Uh, I wear several other hats, but uh, in this one having to do with wood utilization, I started in 2003, and the very first meeting that I went to was at the Department of Commerce, and someone asked me this question. It's a very simple question. What wood products do we make in South Carolina? Well, I had a history of uh, working in industry for pulp and paper, uh, primarily, and so I gave a, an answer that was reflective of my background, talking about solid wood products, lumber, pulp and paper. But after that meeting, it dawned on me that the real answer to this question, which fortunately I didn't say, was I don't know. Because we manufacture a world of products in South Carolina and other states in the southeast. You know, two-thirds of our state is uh, forested, so it makes sense that we, man we make use of that material. And uh, so it set me out on a, uh, what started as a pet project, but just trying to build a directory of all of what we manufacture in South Carolina because somebody asked me this question. Now, we split all of the products that we manufacture in the state into two broad categories. The uh, category that you're prop well, you're interested in both, I'm sure, but this is primary force products. These are products like uh, lumber, pulp and paper, and I'll go through them in a little bit more detail here, but uh, these are products that are made from um, unprocessed raw wood, either logs or wood chips. And these are the categories, or the major categories, that we break all our products down. Uh, lumber, that could be either hardwood or softwood, uh, wood, pulp and paper. Gene mentioned that we have seven pulp and paper companies in the state and this is critical. I'll show you a graph that shows how critical this is and we don't need to take it for, for granted. We don't take it for granted. Um, we just had two major uh, transactions that affect, will affect South Carolina landowners. Uh, IP buying a warehouser's mill down in, um, well, all of them, I guess, but down in, in Augusta in particular, and then uh, Resolute Force Products shutting down one of their paper mills or paper machines in Augusta. We also have pole manufacturers, and we've got a pole manufacturer right here with us, Sam Coker. Um, we have pellet and pallet manufacturers. Now, with a southern accent, it's easy to get those mixed up, but the pallet industry has been around a long time. The pellet industry is brand new, and we actually have our very first pellet manufacturer, well, large-scale pellet manufacturer, who's going to open up in Greenwood County, South Carolina, later this summer, probably in July. We have panel manufacturers. Now, they occur both in the primary and the secondary, the way we classify. If they're made like plywood or OSB out of raw wood uh, or logs, then they go into primary. If it's something like MDF, HDF, or particle board or fiber board, then that goes into our secondary. And then finally, uh, veneer. The other category that I've referred to is secondary, and these are uh, value-added products that are made from the primary force products. And these are the actual categories that we have come up with. First of all is cabinetry, and here, I should have done it on the other slide, but here I have the number of companies that we have in the state. And it's really surprising. This was an educational exercise when we built these directories, because like I say, this is the group that I really had no clue what we manufacture in the state. And there's far more of these companies than there are of the primary. But we have 297 cabinet shops around the state, uh, 175 architectural millwork companies in the state. That's a general term. I, when I hear millwork, I think of moldings and whatnot, but this is a general term that, that takes into account a broad range of things, anything that is nailed on a house, basically. It could be flooring, it could be stair systems, it, there is doors, um, man, windows, fireplace mantles, moldings, shutters, siding, decking, columns, and a wide variety of things. Um, I made use of this directory myself when we were renovating uh, the inside of our house and needed some indoor shutters. I went to the directory. The light came on and said, hey, I know that. I, got, I can find that information. So it can be very useful. The next category is furniture. Uh, Gene mentioned North Carolina's furniture industry. 
Uh, when I went off, I'm from Western North Carolina, when I went off to NC State, I just assumed I was going back to Western North Carolina and going to work in the furniture industry the rest of my career. But that didn't happen, and the um, uh, furniture industry left the state. It's coming back slowly. Uh, but the furniture industry, we do, it's nowhere near as large as North Carolina, but we do have 191 furniture companies in South Carolina. Building structures and components, if you came down I-26, you passed an example of this with Southland Log Homes. In the upstate, up near Greenville, there's good examples, uh, Green River, Blue Ridge Log Homes, and then some of these other type of uh, structures, like possibly the uh, modular system that we just talked about. Um, there's a wide range of, of systems there, including things like trusses, pallets and crates, Paper products is an interesting one because if you've ever toured a paper mill, you've seen those big, huge rolls of paper winding up. Well, it, that's got to be uh, transferred and, and downsized before it can be made into that final product. And so there's a whole cluster of industries that happen to be, it seems to me, centered around Greenville that uh, are these paper converters. And then we also make the final products. Um, Paper is a diverse industry too though, and a lot of our, as newsprint goes down, other things like fluff pulp comes up, and um, you know, I say, well, we manufacture everything in forestry from the cradle to the grave. I mean, we manufacture diapers, and that's a big growth industry in the state, is the manufacturing of diapers. Uh, if you think about it, the baby boom generation is getting to the point where we're going to need diapers, and the adult diapers are a lot bigger than the baby diapers. So this is a, this is a growth industry. Uh, mulch, shaving, and energy. And then the other category is where a lot of the really unusual stuff comes in, like jogging, joggling boards, canoes, mops, shingles, musical instruments. We really make it all in South Carolina. Now, it wasn't good enough for us to just have that for ourselves. The key is to get that out to users, um, to people, engineers, architects, contractors, the people that, that need this information. We put it on our website, so if you go to the South Carolina Forestry Commission and look uh, under economic development, you'll find these directories. They're available in two forms, one Excel spreadsheet with tabs for each of those major categories, and the other is a, an, a Google Earth application. We saw some of what a U.S. Forest Service and the parks and others were doing with Google Earth, and so we tried to copy that. And uh, you can zoom in, you can turn categories on and off. If you're just interested in architectural millwork, you can turn that category on. Zoom in, you can look at, uh, click on the icon and actually get contact information and, and their website. So these are very useful, but we really have not succeeded in getting the word out. This is something that we can do a lot better. We're trying to. We uh, generate other products, hard copy products, and this is something, this is the map that we generated of our primary forest products mills, and I put some of these outside uh, so that if you're particularly interested, you can take a copy home with you. You can get it on our website also. And then for the secondary forest products, I brought some of these. We actually have it in hard copy. This was uh, funded from a U.S. Forest Service grant, and so I have some copies of these. These are our secondary forest products manufacturers in the state. So you can have that in hard copy also. One thing I like, one point I like to make with this map is that, you know, we hear a lot in the upstate about companies like BMW, and rightfully so. In the low country, we hear about Boeing and now Volvo coming into the low country with their plants. But, you know, if you think about it, and I know there's suppliers for those plants, but if you think about it, that plant is located in one county. It's at one location. This is our forest products industry, primary, and we occur statewide and benefit the rural economy of the state. I'll try to speed up just a little bit. And this is a map that Gene showed also, but this I just make the point that we impact rural South Carolina and our impact is spread across the state, not just focused in one county of the state. Uh, these are the number of mills that we have, number of sawmills, veneer, you can see on down. There's a total of 93 primary mills, but look at the number of secondary mills, 731. 
This is what we produce, and this goes back to 1936 when we first started keeping these records. Now back in 1936, blue is pulp and paper, so you can see, and I'm not sure where the pointer is on here, but you can see in that first bar there is no blue. That was before, I guess, the craft process was even invented. Our first paper mills in the state was either uh, the one in Charleston or Georgetown. I'm not sure which one was first. Georgetown? They were about the same period of time, but that was before pulp and paper. So we were all about solid wood products and sawmills, and we had a lot of them. Uh, but over time, two points I want to make is that the, that the line of that is going up. The line of the peaks of those uh, bars is going up. Our industry has grown throughout our history. You do see some downturns at major recessions, but we've always recovered from those downturns and reached a new height. Now, when you get out to the last decade, it looks sort of like it's flattened out, but um, you know, we've experienced a couple of recessions and a major housing downturn. And indications are we, we can actually, we've collected the data for two more points, two more bars on that chart. Um, the uh, Forest Service is a little slow in getting that information out to us, but it's still going up. And with uh, the pellet industry, for instance, there's a possibility that we may reach a new height. Gene showed this, I won't dwell on it, but we've done several in-plan studies. Uh, right now it's at 18.6. We're going to do this again later this year. The point I want to make is how, uh, how our industry sectors, the major sectors, uh, compare. And this is a bubble chart, economist-like, and uh, it shows three pieces of information. The x-axis shows employment, the y-axis wages, and the size of those bubbles, that white bubble in the upper left-hand corner, is $1 billion worth of impact. So you can see pulp and paper, the purple bubble, in the upper right-hand corner. So it's high wages, high employment, and uh, large economic impact. The, the white bubble that's below that uh, is so, uh, sawmills or solid wood products. And then, for instance, our furniture industry is the light blue bubble. But pulp and paper really is a uh, major component to this industry, but our sawmill industry is also. I'm not going to go over these. Gene covered some of these statistics. But I do want to paint a picture as I transition from what we to produce to the sustainability of the resource. Uh, I'll just make the point with this. These are our major forest types. Green is pine, and the other colors are hardwoods. And we have a very diverse but balanced forest here in the state, slightly more hardwood than pine. Uh, Gene made this point. 88% of our forest are owned by private landowners, probably like us, the people in this room. The only major trend here is in this graph to the lower right-hand corner, and that's forest industry ownership. Starting back in the mid-80s, industry started divesting themselves of their industrial lands, or forest lands, and that's continued on, actually accelerated to the point <clears throat> where there's very little industry land owned in the state. This graph is, is sort of the key to the sustainability issue. Our forest land is stable, but we're growing more wood per acre based on the plantations that have been established, the light green bar. And, uh, Plantations are, are generally stable at about 24% of our forest land, but the wood that they're growing has caused that yellow line or the wood volume out there to continue growing up. And we can say that we have more wood in the state than ever recorded. And I hope we'll be able to say that for at least the next five to 10 years. It looks like we will. This breaks it down by pine and hardwood, and the story's the same for both. We have more pine in the state, and we have more hardwood volume in the state. Everything I've said so far, I think, has been fairly rosy. Uh, but here's the, the sort of the cloud on the horizon. And just like we have a baby boom generation among people, we have a baby boom generation in our forest, uh, caused by three factors, um, replanting of the old soil bank program, Hurricane Hugo, and a cost share program called Conservation Reserve Program, or CRP. All those resulted in putting a lot of land into trees back in the late 80s and early 90s, and it created a wall of wood that is roughly 25 or 26 years old. And you can calculate back when Hurricane Hugo 
hit in 1989, and that matches up very well. But this is creating a situation to where our forests are getting older, we have an abundance of, of saw timber sized trees and a scarcity of small diameter trees. This is what it looks like in, um, in this format, but this is in 1986, and you can just barely see the wall of wood starting to form and uh, the zero to five age class. By 93, it had moved up here, 2001, 2006, and 2014. And by now, it's moved up uh, to that next category. FIA is critical information. In fact, while I was, um, while I was, looked like I was messing on my phone, I was querying when Gene said, we don't know what the average diameter, the average tree is in the state of South Carolina. Well, it's nine inches and 60 feet tall because we can hit on that information on uh, our FIA database. But it's all backwards looking. FIA is backwards looking. And so what we really need and what people who come to the state to build manufacturing plants need is forward looking information. So we went to uh, Bob Apt at North Carolina State who has a program that he can do this, grow our forest into the future. We did a special project with him. We've actually done a couple. Now this is the state as a whole under three scenarios. And uh, I won't go into a lot of detail on this, but the, the um, message here is that our forest is going to continue growing and it's going to peak at some time, probably 2020 or 2021, and then depending on the scenario, it's either going to level off or slightly decline. So that's why I say I hope that we'll be able to say that we have more wood than ever recorded uh, for at least the next five to ten years. It does vary though, and this is the weak spot. This is that small diameter wood, and remember how important it is to our state. But it's going to peak fairly quickly, the volume of small diameter wood, probably within the next year or two, and then it's gonna to start to decline. And it'll decline to about 80% of the starting point. So this is something that we're focusing on. This is a major effort to try to get trees replanted and encourage reforestation. But for this group, this is the slide that's the most important. It's the most positive message that we have. Our forest is gonna continue growing. These are the projections out through 2029 for our, for our saw timber sized trees. And they're just gonna keep going. They're gonna level off somewhere out there around that uh, uh, the end of that projection period. But this is a very positive message and it's why we're focusing on things like CLT. Now I went to a conference out in Portland, Oregon last month or in March. Pat was represented the South well as a speaker at this conference. But the interest in CLT is, is really amazing. This conference they originally planned for about 150 people. It was a national conference. They had to work with the hotel to increase the uh, meeting size to 200, then 300, 400, and they had 500 people finally at this conference. Uh, so a lot of interest. And current events, yesterday I was driving home uh, for lunch and I turned on the radio and NPR was on and they, the whole story for about a half an hour there was on the future of construction is CLT. Uh, that was amazing. But um, there is a lot of interest in this. Um, I met this lady right here. She's an architect from Seattle, Washington, Susan Jones. And this was, we took a full day field trip to look at all the wood construction homes in the uh, Portland area, and, uh, or examples of them in, in the Portland area. This was an office building that they built out of wood and uh, CLT, and I, I forget what siding that was, Western Red Cedar probably. But I met with Susan, and what, because uh, we were talking about how did it get started out there in Seattle and Washington. Evidently, it started more in Seattle and moved down to uh, Portland. But uh, really, you need a cheerleader. You need someone to take it on. Uh, and Susan developed a niche in this type of construction, working with wood. Uh, maybe a little uncertain as to the demand, but she's really built up a reputation and a, a niche for herself. This is her home. It, uh, the project was called the CLT House, and she did speak at the conference and went into more detail. 
the house is built out of CLT, and she talked about the design elements. Like, I thought it was unique. That's a bedroom with the different designs cut into the CLT. They do that at the factory. She designed that, and then uh, the children enjoy those shapes as they move across the room and that type thing. This one was particularly meaningful. It was a church that was renovated. It was an old uh, warehouse that was renovated into a church in Bellevue, Washington. And she talked about how the congregation, everybody, every individual was unique uh, in the congregation. And so she built the altar out of CLT where each panel is unique and individual. No two panels at the altar there are alike. So a lot can be done with it. There's a lot of possibilities and there's a lot of excitement out there about CLT. We want to try to figure out how to bring CLT here to the southeast. Every state is competing for the first manufacturing plant and we want to be the cheerleaders that, that bring that to South Carolina.